Gina here to let you know a little bit about our author, Mr. Jacob Ezra Keats, who changed his name uh, to what we know him now as, as Ezra Jack Keats. He was born March 11, 1916 in Brooklyn, New York, to two very poor Polish Jewish immigrants. He was the third child to them. From a very young age, he actually started to show his artist artistic side um, by sculpting and painting and taking any little piece of scrap metal that he could find and make something into it. He never really got any praise at home, mainly at school, um, so he did love school and loved to learn. Unfortunately, however, when the Great Depression hit, his father passed away and he had to leave school to care for the family. Um, throughout his life, he did have several odd jobs, um, some including that he was a mural painter, he did some of the backgrounds for the Mar Marvel comic strips, which I found kind of interesting. And then from 1943 to 1945, he served our U.S. Air Force by designing the camouflage that you see on the uniforms that they have. In 1949, however, he did go back to Paris to study abroad and get back into the swing of things with illustrations, where he just followed his dream and moved back to New York. And that's when his career really did take off. Um, in 1963 was one of his ultimate highs. He actually received the Caldecott Award for The Snowy Day, which is, of course, one of the books that he illustrated and wrote. Um, unfortunately, at the end of 1963, he did suffer a very massive heart attack where he passed away. Uh, Mr. Ezra Keats never did have a family, so he was never married, never had any children out of wedlock. He, in um, one of his autobiographies, he does state, though, that all his characters in every book that he has ever written had a little piece of his children in him, if he ever had any, which I thought was kind of cool, too. Um, I hope you all enjoy all of the information from Mr. Ezra Keat and the Foundation. Thanks! So my name is Taylor Ray, and me and my group are going to be talking about the Ezra Jack Keats Book Award. Um, so, so first I'm going to give you guys a little information, a little background. Um, so the book award was, um, was actually not created before the foundation. So the Ezra Jack Keats um, was a foundation, um, and it was created in 1964, and it was actually private. Ezra was a president and his lifelong friend Martin Pope was his secretary. And it wasn't until Ezra's death um, in 1983 when it became public. Um, since then, um, that foundation, the foundation has created um, some awards um, which we're going to be talking about today. So the Ezra Jack Keats Foundation um, leaders, Lily Pope and Hannah Nuba, created the New Writer Award um, in 1986. Um, and two more have been added since then, um, the New Illustrator Award in 2001 and the Honors Book Award in 2012. Um, so, what do, so what does the Ezra Jacks um, Keats Book Award, um, what is their mission? So their mission is to recognize new writers and illustrators um, that their books and pictures reflect diverse um, culture. Um, so that's the main gist of the award. Um, how the award is given, so the award is given annually, each award is, so only one a year receives this award. Um, the requirements for this award is that the new writer or illustrator um, cannot have three books published in the same year that they're recognizing. Um, so if they do, they, you do not qualify. So some of the people um, that decide this are experts and specialists in um, librarians, uh, illustrators, authors, and some of the CEOs and ex-CEOs of the John Keats Foundation. So the rest of my group is going to be talking about and reading you guys um, a couple book examples, so I hope you guys like our project. <laughs> The 2016 Ezra Jack Keats Award winners are Don Tate for New Writer Award and Phoebe Wall for New Illustrator Award. Don Tate is an Iowa native and similar to Ezra Jack Keats himself, started out as an illustrator. Some of his illustrations include his recent Whoosh, Lonnie Johnson's Super Soaking Stream of Inventions, 
The Amazing Age of John Roy Lynch, and Hope's Gift. The first book that Tate authored was called It Just Happened and received an Ezra Jack Keats Book Award Honor in 2013. It is Tate's second book, Poet, The Remarkable Story of George Moses Horton, for which he was awarded the 2016 Ezra Jack Keats Book Award for New Writer. The book is about the character George Moses Horton, who secretly teaches himself to read and goes on to become an acclaimed poet. The book's character is the first black writer published in the South. He paid his master for time to write and protested slavery in the story. Tate's books feature African-American characters which focus on their history and culture. He is very committed to adding more diversity in children's literature and he works to write books for underrepresented communities. Phoebe Wall is an artist and her printed designs can be purchased on Etsy. She has also illustrated magazine covers. She primarily works in watercolors, collage, and textiles. Her illustrations are very reflective of her home in the Pacific Northwest and also of nature. The book, Sonia's Chickens, is Wall's first book. She is both author and illustrator and received an Ezra Jack Keats Book Award for the 2016 New Illustrator. This book tells how Sonia cares for chickens on her family's farm. One night, one of the chickens goes missing and Sonia's dad has to explain why a fox would steal her hen and she learns how all creatures play a part in nature. It is said that this book captures the circle of life in a comforting but realistic manner. Tea Party Rules by Anne Dickman Cub was playing in the woods when he smelled something delicious. He followed his nose through the bushes and found cookies. And another bear. Can I have a cookie, Cub asked. The bear just stared. Cub tried again. Can I have a cookie, please? The bear just stared. Why won't you answer me, Cub cried. He poked the bear. The bear fell over. Oh, Cub explained. You can't eat cookies. Cub felt sorry for the bear. I'll eat the cookies for you, he promised. Cub was about to take a bite when he heard someone coming. He had no time to hide. Cub pretended to be the other bear. It's time to play tea party, the girl announced. The girl paused. She was, looked closely at Cub. You're grubby, the girl said. Tea party rule, you must be clean. Then we can have cookies. She carried Cub inside and put him in the tub. Cub liked being grubby. He did not want to be clean, but he wanted cookies. When Cub was clean, the girl paused again. She looked very closely at Cub. You're messy, the girl said. Tea party rule. You must be neat. Then we can have cookies. She carried Cub into her room. Cub liked being messy. He did not want to be neat. But he did want cookies. When Cub was neat, the girl paused once more. She looked very closely at Cub. Something is still not right, the girl said. Tea party rule. You must be fancy. Then we can have cookies. She pulled out her dress-up trunk. Cub was certain he did not want to be fancy. He wanted to run away, but he really wanted cookies. Perfect, the girl said. You're ready to play tea party. She carried Cub outside. There were the cookies. Now, the girl said, the most important tea party rule is you must eat daintily. Cub couldn't believe it. He was clean. He was neat. He was wearing a dress, and he had to eat daintily? This was too much for a bear, so Cub helped himself. The girl gasped. You're not following the rules, she shouted. Cub did not care. He had cookies. Soon, only one cookie was left. The girl sniffled. I really wanted cookies, she said. Cub knew how that felt. He gave the girl the last cookie, but she did not eat it daintily. She said, we're, playing, we're not playing tea party anymore. Now we're playing bear. Cub liked this game much better than the tea party. He already knew the rules. The end. Hi, 
I'm James, and I edited this short film presentation. We hope that you enjoyed the information that we shared about Ezra Jack Keats and the Keats Foundation. We also hope that you'll take more time to learn about um, the foundation and all that they're doing to preserve uh, Ezra's uh, legacy. And we'll provide that uh, address on the screen for you. It's ezra-jack-keats.org. Uh, the foundation does so many wonderful little things that if you're anything like me, um, you'll easily be inspired to find something that you'll use in your own classrooms. So it's really worth a look. And once again, uh, we want to thank you for spending the time with us. All right, take care. Bye.